Welcome back to Diets Debunked here at Hippocrates Health Institute. We are so happy to have you back with us. We are here with Brian Clement, world leading expert once again today. Uh, he's a world leader on nutrition, supplements, especially he's written a book called Supplements Exposed. We're gonna be diving into that today as we look at diet pills. And I'm sure many of you out there have possibly even tried a diet pill before in the past. Uh, many Americans and many people all around the world are looking for a quick fix to basically get from A to B a little bit quicker, have to um, not be as uncomfortable in the process of losing weight. And it's it's an epidemic, but especially an epidemic of obesity. Brian, what do you think of this obesity epidemic that we're currently in? Well, I was part of the obesity. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was a pioneer in American obesity. I was <laughs> severely overweight, well before most people. But being a man, I wasn't ridiculed as much. Mm -hmm. uh, they called me big, poor women that are a little plump. It's a whole different story, as you know. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to 1970, the average person around the world consumed three meals a day because moms were much more in charge. They were attendant. They were at home. Uh, women didn't have to work in the workplace as they do today just to survive. Uh, if a couple doesn't work, they don't have enough to pay bills at mm -hmm. this stage. So in the beginning of the 21st century, as we sit here and speak to you, we actually have doubled the amount of food intake we've had. Mm. So over the last 50 years, doubled food. So this is why we're overweight. This is why we're obese. And if you start to understand, as we gain weight, and I know this personally firsthand, you become a lethargic. You sit around, your biggest event is the clicker, changing it on your TV. You know, you are walking a half a block away and you're in your car doing that. And it just amplifies and creates a bigger problem for people. And nobody wants to change, nor do the professions, the doctors who claim to be weight loss experts or the people who give you surgery to lose weight loss. Nobody tells you the truth. It's a personal responsibility that you have to make. You have to make to lose a weight. I know that because... One day I just said, enough. I can't walk upstairs. Uh, I just feel uh, totally uncomfortable. And when that happens to you, before you know it, you're in that merry-go-round of deception. So somebody comes along or you watch TV and you're eating your potato chips or God knows what, your organic potato chips, of course. <laughs> and you have somebody come on, and they always have the sexiest people. You ever notice this? Oh, I've yeah. never seen a fat and obese and ugly person once on these commercials. Nope. I mean, Anna Maria, my wife, always yells at me for watching these girls on these commercials. <laughs> I'm sure your husband <laughs> yells at you about the boys. So you have these hard body, beautiful people, and they say, they took a pill and they look like this. They didn't. Mm. They're in gyms. They're eating the Hippocrates diet. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. So this pill deception is really dangerous for you the public mm -hmm. out there. Let's talk more about this. Yeah, and you know, as we're talking about this, I think it's important to bring up that obesity as a whole, I mean, it's not just being obese, it's leading to so many other issues in someone's health. <laughs> obesity is just the beginning of it. And it's funny, years ago, my dad had said something that was a very sobering fact to me. And he said, um, Lindsay, how many older people out there have you seen who are obese? And um, I thought about it, and I was thinking about all the older people who I knew, and not one single person was obese. Mm. And so I think it's that really brings to mind how many triggers through obesity are brought onto the human condition when we are not taking care of our bodies. Well, it's true. And what we've realized in the last 20 or so years is that if you are overweight, even by a few pounds in your developmental years before you're 18, that you're prone to have more weight in your body your entire life. Mm. So people who were a little plump at 16 or 15, when they're now 40 or 50 or 60, it's much more difficult. The fat cells cry out and say, hey, we want friends, come in. <laughs> and so what people are doing is saying, well, I really don't want to change because they have hedonic hunger. And we're going to speak about hedonic hunger. Oh, interesting. Yeah, hedonic hunger is eating for pleasure. And most people are not that happy. Uh, the data shows. Uh, worldwide, when they ask people, how many of you are happy with your job? Guess what? 80% said no. How many of you are happy with your marriage, your partnerships? 90% say no. Wow. So then we resort to the ice cream. 
we resort to the fast food. Now, to complicate the issue, as we know, every major commercial food company in the world now puts synthetic opiates. This is not a joke, people. Listen to what we say. This is a truth-telling show. They put synthetic opiates in the food and sugars. Two incredibly addictive... We don't have anything more addictive than that. So now the person who's lost, confused, unhappy, they're eating for their pleasure, and they have hedonic hunger. Now, you have this hormone called ghrelin, and that hormone's created in the stomach, somewhat in the small intestine, in the brain to some lesser level, and that's the one that's calling out for you to basically eat. And a lot of these pills intervene and biochemically confuse that. Mm. So we're saying it suppresses hunger. It's really not suppressing hunger. It's cutting off the natural biological rhythmic urge to eat properly. Mm. And so, yeah, what you really want to do is you want to eat more sugar. You want to eat more cake, wow. more desserts, more organic pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Watch yourself on this stuff. Then you have uh, something else, leptin. And leptin's an amazing, amazing hormone. And leptin basically inhibits hunger. And what we do is confuse that with chemistry. Now, mm -hmm. they could be more natural chemistry, but recognize that all pharmaceutical drugs and all chemicals were not fabricated in the midair by psychics. <laughs> Chemists were in laboratories. They disassembled actual plants. And they found out what the components, the elements within the plants were, and then went into a laboratory and synthesized it. So this is utterly confusing to the body's hormones. So what you're suppressing is to eat, not to eat. You have a desire to eat, not because you're hungry, but because you're fixing, you're getting a fix like a drug addict is mm -hmm. fixing. And all of this is usurped by pills. Boy, this is really frightening and dangerous, and it does not work. Well, I think that's a great segue to get us into looking at some of our, our first diet pills here. Now, you'll see a trend with these diet pills, and we've, we've covered the names so that we're not calling anyone out directly, but honestly, they're all the same thing. If you look at the ingredients, you're hitting the same ingredients pretty much throughout all the major brands. And the first brand we want to look at, the first ingredient that's most important here is Garcinia Cambogia. This came about Mm, maybe about 10 years ago when people started really popularizing it. And so Garcinia Cambogia, um, it is not as safe as people may have thought that it was in the past. Now, there was a long time that um, people were going through, they're taking this supplement, they were saying, oh, it came from a natural source, it can't be that bad. But then suddenly what was starting to happen is people were coming in with acute liver failure into ERs and they were not being able to find uh, the root of the issue. And it wasn't until uh, some of the doctors did some digging to find out that some of these patients were taking Garcinia Cambogia and what it was doing was shutting down the liver. So Brian, what are your thoughts on this ingredient? Well, when people market this and many, many, many of the so-called diet supplements have it in it, they rightfully say it's natural but recognize that alcohol is natural, and mm -hmm. heroin is natural, and cocaine is natural, and oil is natural that you put into your car. So that's a very vague description, a dangerous mm -hmm. description. And again, you would get guys like me and women like Lindsay all excited when you say natural. Mm -hmm. And so people say, well, it's not a chemical, so it has to be good. Now, remember what I said just a minute ago that what these herbs do, these are elements, these are chemistry. Yes, natural biological chemistry, but chemistry. They come in and completely confuse the hormones in the body. In my book, Life Force, I embellish and understand that very well to a point you can read Life Force and get this yourself. Hormones are actually the language in your body. So if they're being confused, what is the language that the cells in the liver are getting? Should I function? Should I secrete? Should I not secrete? And so what happens? In this confusion, the liver starts to have dysfunction. And boy, you don't want your liver to have dysfunction because if you do, that's the filter for your blood. If you want your blood to be dirty, 
take these diet pills. Mm, yeah, I mean, and also another thing that this study has found is that you know, it's not only just impacting the liver, but it's also creating free radicals, which we know are not good for our bodies. And it's also inducing inflammation. So imagine, you know, wanting to go work out possibly on your new diet with your, your new diet pills, but the level of inflammation you're experiencing internally is probably going to tell you you don't want to do that. Oh, you bet. And if you're trying to lose weight, you don't want to be inflamed because that bloats you. What you're saying is, I'm inflamed. No, you're bloated. You're bigger. <laughs> and why would you do that? Doesn't make sense. Out the window that thing goes. <laughs> Get rid of that right. so-called weight loss supplement. <laughs> Perfect. So another ingredient that we're finding in throughout these uh, diet supplements as a trend, and it goes through a few different names, but essentially what it is, is green coffee. Um, <laughs> and green coffee comes from the, the coffee plant, and it is um, an acid that comes from it particularly. And so it's in a lot of different supplements. And as we go through, we'll see that, you know, there is caffeine that are in a lot of these supplements. It's not, you're just taking a nutritional, you know, it's not a multivitamin anymore. In most cases, a lot of them are fueled with uh, caffeine. So Brian, let's just hit on caffeine as a whole to start off this section. Well, I think caffeine has a legacy. It was called amphetamines. So when people started to become plump around the world, they started to put speed. That's called speed. This is what truck drivers used to take so they could drive for two days without sleeping. Uh, another thing that you see is speed was used as a recreational drug. And believe it or not, doctors, medical doctors, prescribe this to my mother's generation to reduce weight. And now we know the natural generation, they don't want amphetamine. We're awake enough to say, wait a minute. We don't want a drug out of the pharmaceutical industry. So what do they do? They replace it with a natural drug called caffeine. And as you know, this is very, very dangerous. I've watched people in my whole career, my whole professional life, come off caffeine. It's no different than coming off hard drugs. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I believe it's actually considered a neurotoxin. Is that correct? It is, absolutely. Right, and it's, so it's the plants. It's its way it's protecting itself from bugs that might try to come and eat it and other um, environmental factors. And here we come as a human saying, okay, this is what gives us this reaction. And so we're going to take it in. It's just the plant's natural defense mechanism. So it is very natural essentially, but uh, we're just using it in a way that wasn't designed for us. Well, Dr. Oz got himself in trouble because he was a big proponent of the green coffee bean. Mm -hmm. It sounds a rhythm, green coffee bean. <laughs> and basically uh, he was dragged, unfortunately, which I don't agree with in front of Congress mm -hmm. and he, they said where are you going to produce the research and there was no real legitimate research on this. This was promotional material from the companies that sell these fake weight loss products. Mm -hmm. And you know, recent studies actually estimate that 85% of adults in the U.S. they consume coffee about 180 milligrams every single day, mm. which is about two cups. And you know, to most people, that seems pretty average. But what has happened actually in recent years is the DSM they've actually categorized uh, the withdrawal symptoms from coffee as being an, an actual health condition, um, caffeine withdrawal disorder. And so it shows on the spectrum how much more people are coming across this and how much it is actually influencing people around the country. Well, it, as you know, it's doubled in a few years, but for mm -hmm. my generation, the heavy coffee drinkers, it's gone up four times. Yes. Imagine that. So the older you are, the more you're going to end up in an emergency room from taking what you consider natural food, since the New York Times told you that, who were funded by the coffee industry. All right, so just to give a little bit of an illustration and how caffeine has really increased, uh, the DSM has actually categorized a health condition as it relates to caffeine withdrawal, caffeine withdrawal syndrome. And this just shows us how much more people are experiencing the withdrawal symptoms of coming off caffeine. Actually, we, we know what that's like a lot here because we see people come to Hippocrates and we see them come off their, their natural um, diets of their caffeine, which are, is involved, and we see what happens to them when they come here to campus. Oh, and they say, well, it's organic. Well, <laughs> you can pay a lot more money for your dope or less money for your dope, but it's still dope. It's that simple. As you know, the data shows in recent years we've doubled the amount of emergencies into hospitals from caffeine withdrawal. 
But for 40-year-old people and older, it's actually gone up four times. Can you imagine? Why? Because when we get older, we lose energy. Mm -hmm. Now, why do we lose energy? That's the real question. Because you don't live a life of nutritional sanity. <laughs> That's it. Yep. You know, we're out there eating stuff. Even health food stuff is junk most of the time. And you're spiking your blood sugar with sugar. And it drops and it drops deeper and deeper and deeper. And you need more and more of that sugar. And you need more and more of the caffeine. And you have this vicious cycle where people are literally gaining weight from that. And then what do you end up? Taking caffeine in a pill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, here at Hippocrates, we know what happens to people. We, we always plan for the, the detox symptoms that come with taking on a plant-based, um, really healthy diet that really supports your energy and your nutrition long-term. So even those who say, you know, they've been living a healthy lifestyle, they always have a little bit of withdrawal in some way, especially the ones who have had caffeine or coffee recently. And so we know what to um, expect when those people come and join us. But it's really interesting how often um, people will assume that they're living a healthy lifestyle, but just something so small can really uh, add some adverse um, effects when they're taking on such a clean and healthy diet. Well, it is. I mean, it just shows you a lot of the things that we've done over a generation, even hundreds of years, maybe millennia, are wrong. Uh, just because it's traditional doesn't mean it's right. A lot of things are traditional that are very, very, very wrong. And coffee fits into that category. Certainly diet pills fit into that category. Certainly some fast-track methodology that claims they can sell you a package of reducing weight with no effort is completely wrong. It's time that you wake up and start to understand that you came to this world alone. You're going to leave this world alone. And most important, what you do in between beginning and end is going to govern how happy and healthy and thin you are. So what do you think? We're giving caffeine the gavel? Well, I'm going to tell you, this thing needs to go, bang, bang, out it goes, twice! <laughs> All right, so the last ingredient we're going to kind of cover for this section is going to be BHB, which has really come up recently as it relates to the keto diet, which we actually hit last week. If you guys haven't seen that video, we encourage you to go check it out. But BHB is um, it's something that's naturally produced in the body, but as with a lot of these supplements, uh, you can synthetically create it as well. And that's a big thing that you get into in your book here, Supplements Exposed. Yeah, what happened if you look at Blaubert, who's a Nobel laureate, uh, he and many others, at least uh, mainstream legitimate scientists, show you that we can never ever, ever mimic what we find in nature. There's so many subcultures and nuances within the plants that we've yet to identify. So when we get into a laboratory, we're almost brutes. We force a chemistry, pretend it's identical to what we find in the plant, and it never, ever is. And when that happens, the biology of the body, including the immune system, sees it and drops it and comes after it. Mm -hmm. So you actually think that the butylurol, hoxydroxybutylurol, is going to help you, and what it's really doing is hurting. It hurts the heart, it hurts the kidney in this case more than anything else. Because remember, it takes the kidney, the ketones, and it starts to scramble them. And when that happens, the protein absorbability and digestion that occurs in great part in the kidney can no longer happen. Yeah, and you know, what's really interesting is they're saying that in trials that BHB can be considered safe in some respect. However, what they're saying is BHB can be considered safe for a, a span of five days. And the problem is, is a lot of these supplements are 30-day supplements, 40-day supplements. Yeah. And when well, they don't work, a lifelong <laughs> supplement. <laughs> exactly. And so despite just having you know, the normal stomach, diarrhea, constipation, which they say will cause if you have a little bit too much in um, a period of time, what people are experiencing now are some uh, more long-term side effects as a, as a result of just taking a certain supplement for too long that their body isn't naturally used to producing and making. Well, you bet. And boy, out the window that baby goes. <laughs> I mean, all I can tell you, here's, here's one that we came up with with the health store mm -hmm. the other day. Mm -hmm. And I won't name the name and I won't show you what it is, but this is one that has a little bit of benefit in it. Just a very, very little bit of benefit because it has enzymes in it. Mm. Uh, we've been using here for over four decades enzymes to help reduce you know, fat in the body. 
Remember, lipase is a fat-eating enzyme. Now, what it's meant to do is to break down the fats in natural foods, what we call the essential fatty acids. Your body requires this because if you don't do that, you'll have no energy. The most important fuel for your cells happens to be that essential fatty acid, mm. omega-3, omega-6, omega-9 at some level. Mm. So when you have an enzyme in it, but the problem is it has a lot of pollutants in here too. It uses chemistry. So they trick you, the consumer out there, the poor overweight consumer that at this point feel weak and sad and you just want to do something other than change your life. <laughs> yeah. And so you buy this. So we actually answered that. You know, it was really interesting. I think I had an emotional concern about my own weight and my weight loss because I never wanted to address that issue. Uh, as we speak, by the way, I'm finishing a book on weight loss. It should be out in the next year or so. So at Hippocrates, we actually have our own supplement. We, we won't call it a diet pill, but something we've really found has helped support the body for those people who are looking to, to lose weight. It's called Melt Away. Brian, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Well, I have to be open to all of you today. I think because of my own overweight problem as a youth, I was ashamed of it. So I've sort of avoided the subject of weight loss. Uh, I'm proud to say I'm currently finishing my book on weight loss. It should be out in the next 12 months or so. But a number of years ago, uh, Victoris Kolvinskis, uh, the namesake of this studio, is the Kolvinskis Educational Studio that we're in at this point, said to me, do you know, so many people are enduring overweight. And as you pointed out so well, Lindsay, that leads to diabetes, it leads to heart disease, it leads mm -hmm. to cancer. Uh, it complicates so many issues and makes it much easier for you to get sick and age prematurely. One of the top causes of death is overweight and obese. So what we created, Victorious and I, uh, created Melt Away. And what Melt Away is, it's a combination of plants that have been clinically proven at the top institutions in the world. And we did the clinical research here. Uh, it took us three years, three and a half years, before we put this together. And enzymatically rich plants, we put enzymes together with plants that expeditiously break fat down. Now remember, lipase is actually a natural occurring enzyme that breaks down good fats, essential fatty acids. And in fact, if you didn't have essential fatty acid, you'd have no energy for your body or your brain. And so we want to take something like this that gives you health benefits, unlocks the potentiality for en en energy, and most importantly, reduce weight. And when we did this work initially, uh, we didn't work with one person that was below 300 pounds. Wow. The largest was 468 pounds, and we saw this to be under clinical settings, the most effective supplement way that we can reduce weight. Now remember this, you can't keep eating junk food, including health food, organic junk food, and take this and get to be thin. It's got to be a combination between self-responsibility and this, which will expedite your weight reduction. Excellent. So I think that's um, a great kind of ending point, Brian, but for those people out there who are looking to increase their energy today, who are looking to um, start losing weight today, what are some steps that people can do today to help with that process themselves without any supplements involved? Well, number one, it's protein. So people are starving of protein, especially those of you that are consuming steak and chicken and fish and turkey and all of this nonsense that has been purported to you to be protein. You need easy to digest, instantaneous protein hits to the bloodstream. Uh, sprouts and the juices of sprouts, algaes, highest protein foods on the planet Earth. This is what we give bodybuilders, competitive Olympic athletes. And what it does is regulate blood sugar. See, amino acids work like a vacuum cleaner, a magnet that grabs the sugar which is gyrating, I want, I want to eat. Again, hedonic mm. hunger. That's mm. where it comes from. The sugar is clicking on, clicking off the hormones. And you don't want that to happen. So you want to regulate it with protein. Number two, drink large amounts of pure water. Mm. If you fill your body up with water, 
it gives you the sensation. I used to always have, I'm never filled, I'm never filled. So mm -hmm. I kept putting bad, bad things that made me bigger. Bad makes big. Mm -hmm. And so when I filled my little belly up with water, guess what? It made me have that feeling, but it actually helped to detox me mm -hmm. and take away the fats. The next thing I would strongly advise is don't hang out with fellow addicts. <laughs> if you know that when you're at that family's home or you're with your friends that want to go out to the pizza parlor or the ice cream stand, you don't want to hang out with those people as often as much. You want to look at those stud puppies if you're women and those babettes if you're a man. You want to hang out with those hard body people. They're going to drag you into a gym. They're going to take you to the health store. They're going to bring you to the juice bar. And that's where you want to be. So it's your environment on a personal level, your socialization, it's what you're consuming. Protein's the number one way to eliminate the desire for eating more. And lastly, just be happy with your life. Find your passion. If you have a passionate life, you will in fact have a good life, a thin life, a long life, and a healthy life. Perfect. Well, Brian, thank you so much for sharing your insight on this topic. I hope you guys really enjoyed what we had to share with you today and that um, you just consider some of the things that we were speaking about as you're making decisions for your own health and your own longevity and your own well-being. So till next time, we will see you here on Diets Debunked at Hippocrates Health Institute. Till next time, Diets Debunked! <laughs>